It's time for the Action Figure Show Christmas Edition. Today, we take a look at the best Christmas gifts we ever got. Things we never got, but always wanted for Christmas. Things we wanted for Christmas, but we ended up hating. All that and some more on the Action Figure Show Christmas Edition. And now back from a 14 hour sit on Santa Claus's lap at the Twin Pines Mall, it's that junk man. Welcome back everybody to the Action Figure Show. We're back. That's right, we took last week off. And we're back. Let's make sure the mic's working this time. It's working. You know, I've had some problems with the mic lately. Uh, but we're back with the Action Figure Show. Um, right now, still on Fridays, but I'm thinking about moving this show to Sunday nights. You let me know in the comments below if it's easier for you to watch this show on a Sunday. And also, you know, last time we tested an hour-long episode. We usually keep it around 30 minutes. This one here we're going to keep a little shorter. I'm going to test a smaller format and see how it does. So we're still working out some kinks for this new show. Now as always, we always tell you the latest action figure news and talk about old action figures. But today's going to be a little special because today's Christmas. That's right, today's Christmas. So we're just going to talk Christmas stuff today. And I don't have much of a crew here. Gangs of Chewbacca had to go see his family back east. And we're just going to, uh, me and Larry just going to, uh, talk a little bit about Christmas, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. And as always, here's my faithful command. Here's my faithful companion, Larry Wampa. How was your weekend, Larry? It wasn't a bad weekend. Just trying to finish up some Christmas shopping and pay some bills. Oh, and I got a letter from the PTA. You got a letter? What does the letter say? I, I don't really know why they sent it to me. It said, "Dear Mr. Larry Wampa." We just wanted to let you know that you're wearing your dress too tight and that we had reports of you running around with men and going wild and that they didn't think I should bring up my little girl this way. I don't know what the Harper Valley PJ was even talking about. One, I don't wear a dress that's tight and I don't have a little girl and I don't know anyone that attends Harper Valley Junior High. Did you have a good Christmas Eve at least? It was pretty good. We went over to the Quail's Nest and had roasted crow. Uh, the meat was a little tough, but over that, it's pretty good, Crow. Yeah, yes, yeah, it was really good. Hung out with the family, did some did some stuff. But I tell you, I fell asleep last night in my while editing a video, working on a video. I fell asleep in a chair, and I got up and my foot fell asleep. Both of them. Can you believe that? Both both of my feet fell asleep, and when I stood up, I fell down, fell into my uh, my little uh, tower thing that I put my falcon on and everything. Fell into it. I guess you've been uh, What's up? I guess you've been drinking some of that white lightning moonshine. No, I hadn't been drinking. My foot still hurts today. Don't you hate that when your foot falls asleep? Yeah, yeah, I hate that feeling, but hey, at least it gives you something to do for the day. That's a good way to look at it, Larry. So let's, let's just get started with the show now. You're tired of hearing my rambling. What are we going to do? Oh, the best Christmas. I'm going to give you my best Christmas gift, uh, my 10 best ones I remember getting. And then Larry's going to give you his 10 best Christmas gifts. And hopefully in the comments, you'll tell me about some good things you got for Christmas. Or maybe not. Let's see here. Let's go with number 10. Let's see. Where's number 10 at? There's number 10 right there. Okay, I'll put this one on the list just because I wanted maybe you guys to help me out here. Because it's kind of a generic toy. But I can't find anything about it online. It was uh, it was probably about the size of a, of a comic book. Or maybe a little bigger. Maybe like a note, notebook you take to school. It was probably about it was about this thin, and it was a maze, and on the other side it had a Marvel. Now I've seen a lot of these little rip-off Marvel maze games, but this one was so different. It was so fun. I remember I had two of them. One I could saw easy. One was very hard. But inside the little maze was like a little little pedal, like a little BB. And you you know you do like this to get it to go where you want it to go through the maze. And on the back it had a little lock because you had like four uh, four little BBs inside, so you would lock it. Oh, I remember timing myself, see if I could get to this end or that end. One was like a square pattern that had amazing squares. But I've looked everywhere to find that. I would love to have that again, and I can't find any reference to it at all. Sorry, my eyes at you while I'm trying to do the action figure show. Oh, no. I hope you haven't been hanging out with Scott Bayo. Number nine, Super Mario Brothers 2. Now, I'm a big fan of Nintendo, and I really love the Mario games. Still love them today. They're pretty cool, the Mario games. But... Super Mario 2 was special for me because it was the hottest toy that year. What was it, 88? I'm trying to guess off the top of my head, 89? And I remember my mom got it for me. They had a radio contest, an auction, where they were saying they were raising money for charity. And she would, you would call the radio station, tell them what you wanted to bid. And I think the going rate was probably like $60 in. But I remember somebody would call and outbid my mom. My mom would call back and outbid them. Finally got it. 
and it was like a hundred dollars. It was crazy. I couldn't believe my mom bought me that game for a hundred dollars, and I was the only one in my little area of friends that had Super Mario Brothers. So everybody's like, "Hey, let's go to Junk Teenagers' house and play Mario." Oh, it was a lot of fun to have that and show how you not allowed to come play Mario. Maybe you can if you let me borrow your Transformer action figure, but it's pretty cool. Super Mario Brothers 2. Let's see what's next on the list. This is something I really wanted, and I think I was a little older to have it at the time. I was probably 15, maybe a little 16. I probably wasn't 16 yet. This was a Fisher, yeah, Fisher Price toy. Get that Fisher Price video camera, but it used a cassette tape. I think it was called the PXL two thousand. It recorded in black and white. It recorded in black and white. Hooked it up to your TV. Looked horrible. But I was like, I got my own camcorder. Now back then we did have a camcorder, but you had to put half of the VCR on your shoulder in this big bag and walk around with the camera with the handle. The battery would last maybe about four minutes. And your parents had it. They weren't about to let you go run around the woods or up and down the street with your camera. But if you had the Fisher Price PXL, you could take it out. Your parents couldn't say nothing because they gave it to you. But like I said, it looked like crap. And I can't remember ever making anything with it. But I did love it. It looked pretty cool. I still got some of those tapes. I need to buy one to see what's on them. Buy a player so I can find out what's on them. What we got now, number, that's just kind of a generic one at number seven, bicycle. But mostly the bicycles I got are around 13 or 14 because that was freedom. Remember back then that was freedom when they let kids leave the house? I can remember waking up about, you know, 7, 7.30. Got a bite for Christmas. By 8 o'clock, I was gone. No cell phone, no communication. I was gone. Even if my friends wasn't with me, I was gone. Did I say you that? I was gone. gone. What's that, Larry? You were gone. You were eastbound and down. Yes, I was gone. I was gone. I mean, I was in the woods. Up and down the street, neighborhood after neighborhood. Come back about 8 o'clock at night. No cell phone. Nobody could GPS you. Nobody could call you. Real freedom. Out there in the world by yourself. Oh, so bicycles was always fun right there. Number six. Kind of surprising one here. Raiders of the Lost Ark. The VHS. All right. I almost said VHS game. Not VHS game. VHS. I remember my grandma got me this one. 82 right before Temple Doom came out because there was a teaser at the beginning it really didn't show nothing but it was a Temple uh, Doom teaser but I remember $50 for a video game a video game for a video a movie of a video it was crazy $50 but I was like that was her limit to get me something for Christmas $50 is your limit I was like we're going we had to go to this little special place that had videotapes that rented them out and you had to special order it and get it and uh, I remember my brother was like no, get that for everybody, because whenever I want to watch it, he's going to say, no, you can't watch my Raiders or Lost Ark. I never said that. I shared my toys. Shared my toys, just like he shared his Star Wars toys. He shared them. Uh, let's see here. Number five. Number five is right here on the card. And I kind of talked about it before, a game, but Nintendo. How can I do a top ten list of the best Christmas presents without Nintendo? I'm going to say this is 85 again, top of my head. But I can remember... Probably that October, going to a girl's house, Katrina. We walked up to her house. Her brother was in his room playing um, Mario. And I was I was blown away because by this time, all I saw Atari. But I was already out of Atari. But that was the graphics I was used to, you know, combat and stuff. And it was like, what is this? So I went home and told my parents, got to have this thing. It's called Nintendo. It's got a little plumber. Got it jumps around. And I got it and changed my world. I mean, I was obsessed with uh, Nintendo games. For a long time after that. Number four. This is a good one, Star Wars fans. Jabba the Hutt playset. Now, I had a lot of Star Wars toys before that. My brother would get some. I would get some. And usually, he had all the cool toys for Star Wars Empire. And I would play along with them. But by the time Return of the Jedi came out, my brother was out of Star Wars. Didn't care about Star Wars. Had moved on. So, this was my first, really, playset. That was all to myself when I got it for uh, Christmas. The Jabba the Hutt playset. Of course, it came with Java, Celestia Speed Chrome, and it was a lot of fun. Um, let's see what we're up to now. Number three, a little more of my teenage years. I got this stereo that had a CD player in it. This had to be 89, right around the CD craze. Stuff about this tall, has speakers on the side, turntable, two tape decks, two tape decks. 
high speed dubbing. That's all you need to know right there. High speed dubbing. I could dub anyone's cassette tape in the neighborhood at high speed. That's right. Nicky down the road, you want him to make a copy of your Duran Duran cassette? He would take however long it took you to listen to that cassette. You bring it to my house, I can do it in double the time and charge you less. So, I love this thing. It had a CD player on it and I was really into music then. Probably different than everybody. All my other friends were into Beastie Boys or Guns N' Roses and I was buying it. Randy Travis, oh, Dwight Yoakam. I love Dwight Yoakam. Hank Jr. So, you know, I was a little different. But I was still having a lot of fun. CD player was amazing, but the high def. Uh, I remember making up my own fake radio shows. Yeah, on my cassette tape at home. And now look at me. Now I'm almost 40 years old and I'm making up my own talk show. Some things never change, I guess. Number two. This one might be a little embarrassing. Again, I think I was too old for it, but I wanted it. I got it. That was McGruff, the crime dog. Remember those commercials with McGruff, that little cartoon dog come out? and tell you stuff about being safe and everything. Well, I remember a drugstore by my house had a do stuffed animal doll of this. I wanted it so bad. I used to go in that drugstore and just look at it like, I want that. One day that's gonna be mine. One day it was. Now again, I think I was a little too old. I was probably about 11 or 12, which might be a little too old for this thing, but man, I loved it. I loved it. Uh, where are we at now? Oh, number one? Number one. This is number one because it was the first time I got a whole set for anything. I got the He-Man collection. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This was probably 83. I was still in the Star Wars, and my friends were getting into He-Man. And I was like, oh, He-Man. I was a one-trick pony all the time. Nintendo. Didn't get anything else. I had Nintendo. Star Wars was my action figures. Got Star Wars. Didn't get G.I. Joe. Didn't get Transformers. Didn't get anything else. But my parents, or Santa Claus, bought me a Castle Grayskull. All the figures that were out at the time. And I think the land shark and a couple other things. I think I got two of those birds. So it made me collect He-Man stuff. Got me into He-Man, but I was like, whoa. Okay, I was wrong. I missed out. This is great. So after that, my love for Star Wars toys kind of died down. And I started getting into He-Man. I don't know. But that's that's a look at 10 best Christmas stuff I got. And it's weird when I'm thinking this list that has so many Christmases, but it's really hard to even think of stuff that I got. Which I'm sure that Christmas of each year I was excited and had a want list and couldn't believe what I got. And now, looking back, I'm like, what did I get? That What did I get? I couldn't even think of hardly nothing. So, that's my 10. What about you, Larry? Tell us some 10 things you got for Christmas that you really did love. Well, let's see. It was hard to narrow it down to two things, but let's see. At number 10, my buddy, kid sister. I know everybody wanted my buddy, the doll of my buddy. But I wanted a kid's sister, and I got it. I love this thing. I carried it everywhere I went, dragged it everywhere. I remember tying a fish string to it, and I would just walk up and down the road and drag it behind me. I love this thing. Number nine, something I think you all had, the Fisher-Price Music Box. When we were little, I think we all had this thing. Had a little clock on it. And here's number eight. Uh, I was a little older when I got this, but it was so much fun. I used to take it outside. I like to do it on a hill, especially if it was icy hill. That way you could do it while you were sliding down the hill. And that was a sit-and-spin Ewok. Now, I know they made all sit and spins, but my favorite was the Ewok one. And I like to slide while I was doing it, so I turned it into a sit and spin and slide Ewok. Um, number seven, collection of action figures. We all love Kenner action figures growing up. We had Star Wars, we had superpowers, and my favorite Kenner action figure line was Glamour Gals. I love this action figure line. I remember one year for Christmas, I got like five of them all at one time. Of course, for some reason, it was all the five of the same figure instead of buying one of each. But who cares? I had Glamour Gals. Number six, calculator. I know a calculator doesn't sound fun, but look at this. Remember this? This, like, professor guy? It was, like, my first calculator. And I remember uh, adding up, like, two plus three and finding out that it was six and all that stuff. It was a lot of fun. And probably one of my earliest memories is a game I had. And number five, pass the nuts. Uh, anybody play this? Did anyone out there pass the nut? Did you like passing a nut? <laughs> I'll tell you. When I got this thing, I pass a nut all the time. Just looking at it makes me want to pass a nut. I love to pass nut. Okay, number four. I don't know what this thing's called, but I call it the Hong Kong Fooey car. Because it looks like something Hong Kong Fooey would drive. You remember that crazy dog that had the crazy karate chops? Yeah, Hong Kong Fooey car. I love this thing. I just ride up and down the street in it. Number three. It was a fake telephone, but it was a Mickey Mouse talking telephone. It used to talk all the time until I kicked it across the room. Number two, back to Fisher-Price. 
This was a lot of fun. This was like my pre-action figure days. The Fisher-Price parking ramp. I, I know, this would have to be a popular toy. I'm sure everyone watching this video had it or knew someone that did. And number nine, probably my all-time favorite Christmas gift I ever got was the time we got a new cave. Yes, our last cave melted and we had to, we were out of cave. We didn't have a cave for about six months. And then my dad found this new cave. We moved in. Oh, it was nice to finally have a ice roof over our head. An ice cave. Well, that's something that's something a family could all use, Larry. So I understand that the ice cave. Well, we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about things we never got for Christmas that we wanted that we never never got. But we'll be right back after this. I don't wanna grow up. I am a Toys R Us kid. You just said the magic words. Now look what you did. And look what Toys R Us is featuring for less this season. The Kenner Centurion's evil action figures, Dr. Terror and Hacker, $12.97 each, and their sinister Doom Drone Scraper, $8.79. Awesome. Luckily, the Kenner Centurion's heroic action figures are priced right at $12.97 each, with their Skybolt plane, $19.97. Al's in a one-hour special. When the Tanners lose out, he makes some new friends to get back home. It's Al's special Christmas. Then, Philip Michael Thomas hosts an all-new Motown Merry Christmas with the Pointer Sisters, the Temptations, and many more in Motown's Merry Christmas, a night of specials Monday. I didn't know what to get anyone for the holidays. My Aunt Esther is always a mystery. Uncle Charlie, shopping for him is an adventure. Now, my nephew Timmy was easy. All he wanted was... Hey! This, from Blockbuster Video. Then it hit me. I could make everyone happy at Blockbuster. And with Blockbuster gift certificates, Aunt Esther can rent all kinds of mysteries, Uncle Charlie can choose his own adventures, and I can have a wonderful life. Blockbuster Video! Give the gift of entertainment. Welcome back to the Action Figure Show, where we give you all the latest in action figure news, but not today. We're talking Christmas. Uh, and just talk about action figures. Uh, we got our... Co-host over here, Larry, is going to do... Hey, Larry, let me show you something that my kid's uh, mother, my ex-wife, gave me. You want to see it? Sure, why not? You're going to show it to me anyway. Check this out, guys. Look at this. It's like old Atari games. I mean, we got Freeway. We got Dodge them. We got what? Does it have Custer's Revenge? No, no. I don't, I don't see that game on here, Larry. But look at all these games. I like it. Look at this. And just so you know, do not hang it with a wire. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. I really like that. I thought that was really, really cool, Larry. Oh, man. That's pretty cool. I like that. Do they make one of games from ColecoVision? No, I don't think they make one for ColecoVision. Okay, let's talk about some things we didn't get for Christmas. We looked at 10 things we did get. So, Les, this isn't really a 10 list, but it's stuff I... I did a whole video of stuff I wanted for Christmas I didn't get. So, I just kind of want to talk about a little bit here and there. Let's see. Here's one I think I talked about on that video, Castlevania 2. Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. I really love the first Simon's, uh, really love the first Castlevania, although I wasn't good at, good at it and I couldn't get very far. I always wanted the sequel, and you couldn't go anywhere. I remember going to Kmart, going to Zares, going to Revco, going all over the place to find the Castlevania 2. Couldn't find it anywhere. Couldn't get it. <sighs> then years later, I finally did play it, and I didn't like it, so maybe it's a good thing I... I didn't get it. But Castlevania 2, I never did get. Let's see what else we got here. The Star Destroyer playset was another thing. I remember my grandma was going to try to get me. Or, I think me, or my brother. I can't remember. I think we were both kind of hoping one of us would get it. And we could never find it. You know, that's... And it's kind of crappy, too, when you look at Star Wars playsets. It's the Star Destroyer. It doesn't really look like a Star Destroyer. You can hang someone upside down. That's pretty cool. It had a little hologram thing. And that's, also, that's pretty cool there also, but... Never got the Star Destroyer playset. Still don't have it today. Sad, I know. What else here? Now, I talked about getting bicycles, and I always love to get bicycles, but you probably heard me complain about this. I never got a bicycle with mag wheels. Never. My friend Nikki had them, and that was cool. You didn't have spokes. You had plastic inside the tire. I wanted that so bad. I thought it was badass. I just couldn't. I was like, I've got to have that. I thought that was bad. So what else we got in here? Oh, how about this? A robot that works. I used to see all these commercials for toy robots like Verbot. And every time I got one, guess what? It didn't do what it said it was going to do. Verbot, it said it would go into the kitchen and get you a soda out of the fridge and bring it back to you. Verbot didn't do nothing but disappoint kids. That's all it did. 
So that's some stuff I didn't get, but I wished I did. Larry, I'm sure there's a long list for you. What are some things for Christmas you wanted but never did get? Okay, I made a list of some things I didn't get for Christmas, but I always ask for Christmas after Christmas. One was a box of crayons with a sharpener on the side. I think it was like 64 crayons. You remember you could sharpen it? <laughs> I remember everyone at school had this, but I never did. I think they wouldn't get it for me because one year my cousin had it, and I remember sticking my little finger in it and spinning it around inside that sharpener, and it cut it all up like little paper dolls in kindergarten class. Uh, I never got a head of the class poster. I kept wanting one. I always asked, give me a head of the class poster. Back when Dr. Johnny Fever was on the show, not that English guy. Uh, Cluster's Revenge for the 2600. I love this game. There was an old guy down the road. He played a lot of Atari games. I used to go to his house all the time and play Cluster's Revenge. It was a cowboy game that was a lot of fun. And one I asked for over and over again was bed sheets to My Little Pony. Never got it. I did get some bed sheets for Snorkels, but I wanted My Little Pony. Well, it wouldn't take much to please you, but sorry you didn't get any of that stuff right there. It was like some fun stuff to get. So, let's talk about stuff we did get for Christmas, but we hated it. Maybe we asked for it. Maybe we didn't, but we got it anyway, and we hated it. It wasn't like we thought we would. Well, I guess, so let's just talk. First, I got someone. I can't remember who gave it to me. It's probably an aunt or uncle or something. It was a set of number two pencils with no erasers. Now, it's bad enough to give a kid a, a set of pencils for Christmas, right? That's, that's pretty bad. I mean, no kid wants, what, what, kids don't want clothes for Christmas. Maybe it's something really expensive, rare, like a, like a leather jacket or something. But most, for the most part, kids don't want clothes for Christmas. Yeah, clothes don't, kids don't want clothes for Christmas. And they don't want anything they have to use at school. Pencils. And pencils with no erasers? Why would they even make such a pencil? <sighs> mm. Why would they, I don't even know why they would do that. Okay, um. Board games. I would often ask for them, and I would get them, and I would be happy I got them, but nobody would play them with me. Friends would never play them with me, and of course my brother and sister, who's older than me, they would never play with them. I mean, I got Raiders of the Lost Art board game. Played it by myself. I mean, I got a Smurf games where you had to put all these little things everywhere. Played it by myself. I remember getting all kinds of board games, and guess who played them? Me. Guess who I played it with? Me. And nobody else. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, I love What's that? board games. Yeah, I love getting board games. Me and my family would play them all the time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I guess if I had a big family like you did, Larry, uh, somebody would have played it with me. So what else didn't I like? This one's got to make the list because I just talked about it. Verbot. I could not wait to get Verbot. This thing looked amazing. I was like, I can't wait to get Verbot. But I got Verbot. Talked about it earlier. It didn't do anything it promised to do. Wouldn't work half the time. You had a little thing you had to talk into. It just... It, I still get... Bad memories about that verbot, so. Oh, here's one. A dominoes game. Now, this was kind of, I guess it's kind of like a board game. It was these little dominoes. I, I know that it's got a name. I'll find the name of it and put a picture up. But these little dominoes. And you knock them all down. It's like Domino Racer or something. And you set them all up. It would come with a board so you can know where to put the dominoes. Push them down and they would all fall in the design. You could do that with your own dominoes, of course. But this was a way to get people to buy this board game thing. Call it a board game. I guess it wasn't really a game. But I'm sure it worked like it said it did, but I never did do it because I think I did a couple times. It would take you hours to set this thing up and then push over the dominoes and about three seconds, it'll fall down. And then it'd take you another couple hours to put it. It's kind of like that game, uh, like that game uh, Mousetrap. It takes you too long to set it up so we don't even want to play it. So that domino rally or whatever, didn't like it as I thought I did. And here's some clothes I did ask for, and I did get a, le a leather jacket. Now, of course, I had an Indiana Jones hat. I was about 11 and 12, probably like a jackass, but I thought I looked cool, and I needed a leather jacket to go with it. And I got one. Thanks, Mom and Dad, I got a leather jacket. But guess what? It had a collar that was fuzzy. It had a... It was a fuzzy collar. Indiana Jones don't wear a jacket with a fuzzy collar. But I still wore the hell out of that thing. Still thought I was Indiana Jones running around the woods, <laughs> jumping off a porch. I bet you called yourself Georgiana Jones. But that's a look at some things I did get for Christmas that I just didn't like. And I'm sure Larry has a long list of that stuff. He probably broke it down to just a couple because I told him to keep it down. To keep it down, not to go crazy with this list. Right, right, or le right Larry? Yeah, I knocked it down to only a handful of items because you requested it. Good, good. I'm glad you kept it to only a few. If I didn't tell him to kill, he would have done a whole hour episode of stuff he didn't get or stuff that he hated. 
Okay, Larry, tell me about some stuff you didn't get. For, uh, what are we doing? I forgot what we're doing. Uh, tell me about some stuff you hated that you did get. Okay, some stuff I got for Christmas that I really hated when I got it. One, I got this every once in a while from one of my great grandmothers. <sighs> metal toy cars. You know, like Hot Wheel cars, but they're made out of metal and they have a hollow bottom and plastic wheels. You wanted Hot Wheels or Matchbox cars, but you got these metal cars. Hated these things. They look really cheap and they would always get all rusty when you left them outside. Uh, I remember getting this action figure line. I got about four figures from it. Lost World of Warlords. That's right. You ever heard of that? No, no one has. What is it? It's a He-Man ripoff. Yep, your mom didn't want to pay $2 for a He-Man figure, so she bought you a Lost World of Warlord action figure for $1.50 at the Family Dollar. <sighs> One thing I always wanted, I finally got it, wasn't as great as I thought it would be, but it was cute. Uh, that was a kosh, I guess that's how you say it, a kosh, I don't know how to spell it, it was a little baby animal. I loved, I couldn't wait to get this thing so all my friends would be jealous, and although I did enjoy it, my friends weren't jealous, all they did was make fun of me. I don't know why I look at it, it's cute. Uh, I guess the most disappointed I ever got was getting a power glove. I thought this thing was going to be the answer to all my dreams. A power glove from the Nintendo. Man, did it ever suck. And you had to put those bars on your TV and they kept falling. But I guess it did look cool when you wore it. And the last one on my list is something I really, really hated when I got it. Light Bright. Remember Light Bright? Oh, God, I hated this thing. Yuck, Light Bright. I call it Lights Off Bright. It was horrible. Light Bright? Why would you hate light bright? It would use so much light. So much heat would come from that light, it would start melting the cave. Do you know how it is to have all your clothes wet when you have to go to school the next morning? Okay, well that makes that makes sense there, Larry. Well, believe it or not, it's a little short show. That's it. That's the action figure show. No guests this week. Sorry, and no Captain Foley to come on and beg for a gift basket. But that's a look at Christmas. I thought being Christmas Day, I know a lot of you probably out doing family stuff. You've not got time to watch a video, but this might be a little fun. Leave in the comments below maybe some Christmas stuff you remember, some stuff you don't remember. Well, I guess if you, you don't, don't remember, remember it, you can't put it in the comments below. But I want to thank you. Great 2020 for the channel. And I'm glad you're here with the Action Figure Show. Help us spread the word about the Action Figure Show. Share this video and more. And I think that's it. Larry, got anything else you want to add? I just want to say we had a little fun. We talked about stuff we got for Christmas, stuff we didn't get for Christmas, stuff we got in and didn't like for Christmas. But remember, it's not about what you got for Christmas or what you didn't get for Christmas. It's about what you gave for Christmas. Good advice from Larry right there. And as always, you can follow us on the Action Figure Show on Instagram or the Action Fig Show on Twitter. Uh, we need to use it more. Of course, you can go to that junk man on Twitter and follow me. But Larry does all the stuff from the uh, Action Figure Shows. And of course, Kenner Toys on Twitter too. But that looks like it's it. That's the Action Figure Show. Merry Christmas, everybody. We'll be back on a Friday or a Sunday. I haven't decided yet. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you for watching. Junk man. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>